Hey Hodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Okay, this is it. This is the last video of the year. I, I would like to say some things, but let me introduce those of you who are new to my channel. Welcome. Hi, thank you for clicking on this video. I know I already said that, but I'd like to thank you specifically, new people who are joining me for clicking on this. I know it takes a lot to click on a new person's video to catch the vibe. So if you are new here, my channel is all about loving my makeup collection as it currently is, while well, being very discerning when I do decide to bring something into my makeup collection. I also do reviews and we are going to do like more reviews next year, but we're still going to do it like in a more reasonable, manageable way. And like not everything that I will be reviewing next year is something that I intend on keeping. I'm going to pass those on to friends. So if you're into the kind of content where you see the person regularly using the same things, loving those things over and over again, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. And I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. No pressure though. I'm just so happy that you're here. Today we are going to be talking about the final it's the final part it's it's the literal final part of the countdown it's the final countdown but before we jump into all of that let me just i would like to say <clears throat> i'd like to say some things and it's my channel and i should be allowed to do that i'm gonna do it in a, the form of a song is that my camera that was a reference to jinx monsoon i don't know what happened in my schedule i even i planned out my december I don't know what happened because something got messed up and I don't know what I did to myself. But anyway, there was supposed to be an additional video that I didn't do somewhere. I think I just like didn't do a video last week. So what I would like to do is kindly thank any of you. Just do a little reflection. I can't believe the year I had here on YouTube. My goal when I started the year was to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. A little did I know I was going to be closer to 3,000 by the time we rolled out. So I want to thank every single person who has watched one of my videos or subscribed. If you came from Kaki, if you came from Hannah, if you came from anyone I've collabed with this year or anyone who has shouted me out, Teresa, if you have come from any of those people, thank you so much for subscribing to me. Or if you just found me in your algorithm somehow and you were like, this person seems fun and you clicked on them and you stuck around. Thank you. Like genuinely thank you. This stuff is hard. Doing this stuff is hard. Recording videos, coming up with concepts, editing them, and to watch the channel grow this year, to watch my channel grow, to watch this grow was like very special to me. Uh, I cannot believe the connections that I've been making, not only here on YouTube, you know, like with the aforementioned, like Hannah, Kaki, Teresa, these people that I, a state of Kate, all of these people that I've connected with. And if I've forgotten anyone, I'm so sorry. It's, it's, I just, a lot has happened this year. But I like really appreciate that like I've been able to like make those connections and meet these people and watch my channel grow and just see a lot of hard work pay off. I have been on YouTube for some time, but I, you know, didn't do it very seriously until last year. And now I'm seeing dividends and it's crazy to me. Like I'm in the partner program and I didn't think I was ever going to be able to be in the partner program. I never really thought I was going to hit 1000 subscribers. So that's very special to me. And I really thank you all for making that happen. I also want to specifically thank all of my patrons for, you know, donating your money to me, monetarily funding this channel. You make this happen more than you know. You make sure that I'm able to buy things for review and try new things. And it's it's incredible to me. So I think everyone who's a patron, I really do. You guys are killer. You guys are the best. I mean, all of you are the best. Just simply all of you are the best. Can't wait to see what I get up to next year. I have some stuff that I've been, you know, planning out for next year. So it should be interesting. Uh, some of the same, some, some, some new. Very excited to see where, where this journey takes us into the new year. Thank you all again for just being here. And if you are new to this video, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. In the off chance that you are new here, I'm ranking everything in that I tried this year for the first time. So it might not be a new item of makeup. It might not have been released this year. It could have been something that was released in a year's past, but I tried it for the first time this year. New releases don't always interest me. So sometimes I want to explore something in the past that I may have missed. For example, on my cheat today, I have something that came out this summer that I was like very interested in and then came and it went and then I was like you know it's still available I should just buy it now and why not why not it doesn't have to always be the new thing I need to make an addendum I realized that I forgot something pretty significant in my rankings like didn't put it in there at all I was sent three eyeliners from Colfi Beauty earlier this year I don't remember when that happened but they did send me them they are really good I don't know where I would put them I wasn't going to rearrange my list but just know that they probably would have ended up in this video organically I did give one of the shades away but the shade Tiger Queen from Colfi Beauty is like bar none my favorite eyeliner like their eyeliner formula is 
killer. It's so good. Stays in the waterline. Beautiful formula. Easy to do wings with. Beautiful and creamy, but sets. It's a wonderful formula. But Tiger Queen is like my favorite shade of eyeliner that I've ever had. It's like this terracotta color. It's super beautiful. And I'm not even like an eyeliner person. I'm getting into eyeliner, as you can see on my eyes today. I have like a pretty big wing going on. Those eyeliners really, I think they really sparked my interest to be like, maybe I want to be more into eyeliner. And I'm also currently testing a formula right now that makes me really excited about eyeliner. So maybe I will be an eyeliner girly. I have to do my work. So I appreciate you being here. Can you look up that way? The people are going to be so excited to see you. We're at the top 18 because I tried, I don't know, I think I tried 70 things. So we did two lists with 17, two lists with 18. We're in the top 18. Remember how we talked about so many Sonia G brushes in the last video? We're not done. So at number 18 is the Lotus Soft Cheek Brush from in 18th place is the Sonia G Lotus Soft Cheek Brush. This brush is definitely the prettiest brush I own. It's the prettiest brush I own. Bought some Sonia G brushes earlier in the year and then I bought a second round. I am trying to finesse my brush collection where like each brush is my favorite version of that thing. And it's mostly with face because I mess with my eyeshadow brushes in a very weird way. Like I almost never use them for whatever the brand probably designed them to be used for. There's like brushes, and, you know, anyway. So like I have like eyeshadow brushes and I'm like, these are the brushes that I use with like creamy, they'll be covered in gunk afterward, like eyeshadow brushes. But for my face products, I just want to have the best and my favorite version of that I want one of each which is ends up being a lie later so shh. when it came to blush brushes I just felt like I was never satisfied it's never satisfied because I have some blush brushes that don't pick up enough or pick up too much pigment whenever I'm using a blush when this came into my life when I bought this it didn't come into my life I bought this I paid money for this when I bought this and I used it for the first time it like didn't matter whether it was a blush that I thought was too pigmented or not pigmented enough. It always seems to even out with the same amount of pigmentation. Like I, it, it's a magical brush and it always picks up just enough that you do like one swipe, one dip in, you know, like it's just a gorgeous brush. Not only is it gorgeous physically, but it is a gorgeous in performance as well. Obviously, as we keep talking about these Sonia G brushes, I think minus the ones that aren't a shape that I'm interested in using, beautiful and I think a worthy investment if you were wanting to try them. But I'm not saying that you need to go run out and buy a Sonia G brush right now. If what you have is working and you're not on the market for it, like you don't need to like upgrade it. But whenever you are looking for a new brush, whenever that is the time, whenever you are thinking about it and you want to invest, so far my experience with Sonia G brushes have been wonderful, amazing, fantastic. Oops. So that's actually the Lotus Cheek. Now we're going to talk about the Soft Cheek. <laughs> I don't always remember the names of them. I'm not always looking at them. I'm not the kind of person on YouTube who like, you know, says I'm using the Sonia G blah, 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 whenever I'm applying something. Unless someone specifically asks in the comments because, you know, my channel is is about loving my makeup collection as it is. So sometimes I do like if like I'm using it for the first time or if it's something that I'm still trying to wrap my head around or if like I'm using a product for the first time and I'm like, I'm using this brush because I know it to be reliable. That would be the only time I really try to shout things out because I feel like when you're watching someone on YouTube and this isn't like if you are someone who does this and on YouTube that's great like and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing I think that there's a place for all of this but it's just like I know as a viewer if I was watching someone and they were always talking about like this brush this brush brush it would get into my head that I need that brush and that's not what I'm saying and obviously we're talking about all the things that I love this year like we're in my best of and I know that's like this is kind of like a, a minefield for that kind of behavior but just know that like you don't need any of these to be able to do your makeup well and whatever you have and if you're making it work then the it's continue making it work. I just don't always shout things out, which is brings me back to why I couldn't tell the two apart by name just now. I have been in this revolution of <laughs> what's my favorite kind of product when it comes to my cheeks. Do I like cream? Do I like powder? Do I like cream or like powder? Well, I like both in reality, but I had noticed myself mostly drifting away from powder highlighter. So I bought this soft cheek brush. Mm. And I love it. It puts on powder highlighter. And that's what I use it for. You can use it for blush too. And I'm sure it would apply things beautifully. But I bought this for highlighter. Because I had been using eyeshadow brushes to apply my highlighter. I was looking for something that was going to apply things really diffused. And so I have a powder highlight on my cheek today. And I use it to apply it. And it just makes all of my powder highlighters go on so beautifully. And not too much. And diffuses them. The only thing is, it's a little hard to like pinpoint if you need, if you have smaller cheeks, if you're trying to be more accurate. But I actually was afraid of that. And then as I've learned, like getting the highlight maybe on a wider range looks better. And it looks more intentional than whenever I'm like 
purposefully putting it like right here, which is like typically what I do with like the small eyeshadow brush. So this really turned it out for me. It's also a beautiful brush to look at. Sonia G brushes are beautiful to look at, hold and use there's the, the, like all parts of a sonia g brush is like ideal for this bringing me back into the powder highlighter sphere felt really good because i think what's kind of going on with me is like i'm sitting in this place and navigating through the makeup world now as someone who started out like loving color and boldness and like loving being really bold with my makeup. And I still love to do that occasionally. I still really love to play with color. I still love very colorful cosmetics. But as I'm navigating through aging and taste and like how, like I used to not really care if my makeup clashed with my outfit, but now I kind of think about that a little bit more. These are things that I'm all considering. So having the option to wear a powder highlight without it looking like a chalky streak on my is like nice and I like having that you know it's just interesting how these products are like making my life easier for the way that I like to do my makeup now but I think if I would have bought these Sonia G brushes three years ago whenever I was like just putting hot pink eyeshadow and purple eyeshadow on my eyes with like the intensely highlighted cheek. I don't know that this would have added as much value as it does now. So it's all things to consider. These products that I'm talking about are very conditional to like the way I like to do my makeup right now. So that's always something important to keep in mind whenever you're listening to me talk about things. In 16th place, so that was 17th and 18th, but I got them mixed up. But in 16th place is the Merit Great Skin. This is something that I did receive in PR. When this got released, I kind of just like looked at it and like I was like, I don't know what I would do with that. And then I saw people on YouTube starting using it as a primer and I was like, hmm, hmm. I wonder if that's anything like the Ritual Defeat Thorn Oil. It is in fact. They, so they provide a very similar purpose in life. And I talked about the Thorn Oil earlier on this countdown, which I also think is a great product. This ranks higher for me for two reasons, the price point and how it comes out of the bottle. Not that the dropper is faulty on the thorn oil at all. Oh, three things. You don't have to shake it as much. The buy phase by phase of it all mixes a lot faster than the ritual defeat thorn oil there's like powder or something in the thorn oil that you have to like agitate every time there's like metal balls in it and i just feel like i can never shake it enough to get everything fully incorporated like i don't think i've ever fully incorporated the thorn oil where with the by phase of the merit great skin i feel like it's very easy to do i love that it has a pump although the pump is not great the pump is not a great pump that first squirt out when, if you're doing more than one pump, or so if you're only doing one pump, it's always going to be aggressive. But if you do a pump and then a pump, the second pump doesn't come out scary like the first pump does. I'm talking about these as makeup primers, though. This makes your skin look like glass. And anything you put on top of it is also going to be extraordinarily shiny, extraordinarily glossy. So if that's the kind of look that you're into, then you might like this. And I would also say this is probably glossier looking than the thorn oil, depending on how much you use. So for the thorn oil, because I have oily skin, I typically only use three drops of the thorn oil from my whole face. The Merit Great Skin, I've been using two pumps because I found that one isn't enough, but two is maybe a little bit too much for me. So just like work it down your neck. But I use neither one of those products. Neither one of these products do I use them as skincare. My skincare is already done by the time I use these. It's just something that I think works as a really, really fabulous base for makeup. So I am speaking about this specifically as a primer. And like, it doesn't add any, like, I don't think it would add any longevity to the product or anything. But I just really like the way it makes all of my makeup that I lay on top of it work. It's very good for foundations that you find hard to spread or that don't spread. It gives them much more spreadability because your skin's just like, oh, it's gorgeous. I just love the way my skin looks when I use this product. It's so good. I have both the Thorn Oil and the Merigrade Skin still in my collection, even though I've already done my declutter series. Not serious. I've done my one declutter video at the end of the year. I kept them both. My intention is to finish the Thorn Oil first and then... I will use the Merit Great Skin and then I would repurchase the Great Skin. But it's just because this is $38 and the Ritual Defeat is $75. Both of them were sent to me in PR. I think that's also important to note. It's not like I'm comparing something I bought to something that I received in PR. So it's like they both came into my life the same way. It's not like I feel some kind of way of having spent $75. I'm just thinking of me as a consumer. If I had to put my own money up for one of these items, it would be the Merit Great Skin just because of the price point and all the other things I mentioned. It's a beautiful product. I'm so excited to talk about this. In 15th place is the Ritual Defeat Lunas Elixir 3 Drop Foundation. Now, if you watched my initial, if you watched my initial review of the 3 Drop Foundation, you might be a little surprised. Like 15th place, that seems high. What happened? What happened since? I was really still trying to wrap my head around the product 
which I don't even know that I fully do now. What's crazy about this is that it's a wild color. It looks orange. When I drop it out of the bottle, it looks orange. <laughs> and then I put it on my face and then it looks like the color of my skin. Now this formula is very sheer, very sheer, so sheer. But what it does so brilliantly is like it blurs and just evens out your skin in a way that you could not found them by like holding that thing in your hand. I still have plenty of qualms with this product, but I love the way that my skin looks when I wear this foundation. It is so pretty and I have oily skin and I was really kind of worried about this like oil you know, basically it's kind of like an oil foundation. You have to shake it really well. That's one of my qualms with it because sometimes if you don't shake it well enough, oh, my feet, sometimes if you don't shake it well enough, you can tell that like everything's kind of separated and it's just like a little bit annoying. It's a little bit annoying and frustrating. I think what I think is it's so close to being like the perfect kind of foundation for me that like that's why it ranks this high like it's so easy you like put it on with your hands which I know it's not for everyone and I in my video I tried it all three ways and the hands were the best way warming it up between your hands like pressing on your skin is the 100% the way to do that 100% I am going to tell you about the qualms so I'm about to list some things that's going to be like really confusing as to like you're going to be like why why are you saying this one Rachel Defee has already seen that video because the reason I got the thorn oil is because they wanted me to try the thorn oil with the three drop foundation here are my qualms and I stand by these qualms so the Rachel Defee this this product in particular it was a lab sample release this is not available for you to purchase right now so I think I'm, I'm gonna just be more critical of it because I can be the problem here are the problems it smells like frankincense that's one of it smells like that it dissipates rather quickly once it's on the skin it really does but it's alarming you put it up to your face and you're like Whoop. And there are some of you who are going to be really into that. You're going to love that. You might be into that kind of scent. For me, in my cosmetics, I don't want my cosmetics to smell like that. I don't mind that scent on people. It's not a scent that I would wear, you know, like frankincense or like something that has that heavy. It's like not always what I'm looking for scent profile wise. But like, I don't want my cosmetics to smell like that specifically. I really want my cosmetics to have like, if a scent, a very neutral scent. Like I don't want it to smell like something. I don't, want, I don't want to be able to be like, that smells like frankincense because I can tell it smells like frankincense. The second thing, the bottle. So they discount the price. They said that they wanted to sell this for like $56 or something like this. And I paid $35 for it. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what I remember paying for it. It comes in a squeezy bottle. It feels like the Glossier skin tint in, in the hands. And I was just like, you cannot charge me $55 for something that comes in this dinky plastic squeezy bottle. There's no experience there. And if you've ever touched a Ritual Defeat product removed from this, it's an experience. The thorn oil is an experience to hold. Their compacts are beautiful. Like there's something about that. It's very alluring. There wasn't anything alluring about this packaging. And the top, which I appreciate that they were trying to do a top that was making it hard to open. So if you were traveling with it or whatever, it'd be like wouldn't accidentally twist open. But I didn't find the packaging to be particularly accessible. It's a very small bottle top. And to open it, you have to like push. It's like a medicine bottle. You like push down and twist. And I, there are people who are not going to be able to do that. And I just think that that need to be reconsidered. And like, again, I'm not the I'm not the accessibility police. I don't know what the solution to that is. I have trouble opening it sometimes. I imagine that people who have like hand issues where they can't like move their hands and do things like that very easily. They're going to they're definitely going to have issues if I'm having issues opening it sometimes so I think those are all things that's all feedback I gave back to ritual defeat when you do a lab sample release it, it you are in, like what after a certain amount of time you are you you get a survey in your email and then you like fill out how you felt about the product and it's like a very long survey where you can like write in your answers so this is all feedback that I've already given to the company but those are my qualms with it but like the formula is awesome and you would not know I'm fairly certain that the, if I remember correctly, this is a silicone free formula. And I don't even think there are that many ingredients in it. Uh, Ritual Defeat quietly is a clean brand. They like pride themselves on being a clean brand. But like in my brain, I associate them with like pushing things forward. If that makes sense. It's like sometimes clean brands get a little hoity toity. I don't feel that way about Ritual Defeat. Ritual Defeat isn't bragging about being clean. It's just something that's like part of their gig. Anyway, I'm fairly certain there was like 10 ingredients in this. It's awesome. It's awesome. Like it's so close remove the fragrance, make the packaging better. And I'm in, like I'm in all the way, would buy again, lower the price. If you're going to keep it in that packaging, lower the price. It wouldn't be a hot mess Tom video if we were in my top products, <laughs> if we were in my best products of the year and I still wasn't shit talking the products. <laughs> like it would not be one of my videos if I'm like, here's this really beautiful thing. But 
<laughs> it's like it's in my top 10 but <laughs> it's just a very it's very quirky very funny me thing to do in the 14th place is the tart tubing mascara tart tartlet tubing mascara okay <laughs> i would not have thought <laughs> That I would have not only one mascara ranking this high, but two mascara rates ranking this high. If you would have said January 1st of 2022, you would have said, by the end of the year, Tom, you're going to have a Tarte product in your top 20 products of the year. I would have said, I would have slapped you and said, you're a fool. Joke's on me. And here we are. This was my first foray into tubing mascara. Now, I like wasn't really sure what the deal was. The reason I bought this is because a former coworker of mine, when I was at Sephora trying to re-up on my lash clash, my former coworker was like, try this Tarte tubing mascara. And I was like, I've never tried a tubing mascara. Now, I'm not actually sure that this Tarte tubing mascara is like a tubing mascara in the traditional sense. The mascara didn't come off in tubes like uh, some others do. And I know and I've heard that that's happened, but I was like, well, this is weird. This doesn't really do that. But I have now tried another tubing mascara where it does come off in tubes and that's alarming i don't like i don't know that i like that it, i mean it's weird it's just weird it's just weird it makes me uncomfortable i see the little tubies in my my sink and i'm like ugh, ugh, ugh. anyway so this didn't do that it performed beautifully it was like a pretty dramatic mascara it asked it added like a bunch of length and volume it like really kept the separation of my lashes and if you went in with a second coat Ooh, it looked like you were wearing falsies. It was really good. It was really nice. And because of it being a tubing mascara, I guess, all of it comes off when you wash your face. Like you wash your face and there's none of that like raccoon eyes the next morning. Like it's all, it's off. It doesn't play around. It comes off your face. Holds up really well through the day. It performs as a tubing mascara or is what I've heard a tubing mascara should perform. It does all of those things except when you wash off. That's like the one thing that I don't think it's like doesn't feel like a tubing mascara in that sense. But like this is awesome. The packaging was so wonderful and it's like, I don't know if it was tin or a metal or whatever, but like it was really heavy in the hands. It might've been glass. I'm not actually hundred percent sure, but like it was like heavy in the hands, beautiful purple silver, really easy to find. It was oh, just gorgeous. It was a gorgeous, it was a gorgeous, I, you know, I'm going to give you your flowers to heart. You really did that. And I didn't think I'd be saying that at this point in the year. Is it a really large release? Like, is this a release that everyone was talking about this year? No, but like, Honestly, if you if you were looking to try a new mascara, I confidently recommend this one to you. I don't know when the last time I washed this jumpsuit is, but it smells like Tom Ford's Soleil, which is a body oil I have, like a shimmering body oil. And I was like, wow, I must not have worn this in summertime <laughs> because I must have worn that oil the last time I wore it. Anyway, while we're on the topic of mascaras, in 13th place is the Yves Saint Laurent Lash Clash Mascara. <sighs> My favorite mascara. The whole time I worked at Sephora, all of the years I worked there, the Shock Mascara by YSL. Ooh, my favorite mascara. It brought the drama. It brought the volume, it brought the length. It looked, again, like I always kind of want my mascara to do the work, to make my eyelashes look like I'm wearing falsies without having to do it, be or like as close, like, you know, I want them to look like that. I'm not talking like the most dramatic falsies. I'm not, you know, I'm not talking about 301s or anything like that. I'm talking about like wispies. Like I want it to look like I have wispy lashes on, but without having to do that. And the shock did that perfectly. And at the beginning of the year, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to commit and like only buy the shock mascara this year. <laughs> Cue the laugh track because I tried four mascaras this year and like that was not my intention at all this was my second mascara i tried this year so it was from like april until the end of june and then i went into rubber lash so it's been a while since i had this the shock was discontinued and i was like <laughs> oh my! i don't know how to explain this to you i'm so early in the game still i've only been wearing makeup for the past since 2016 so the past six years and there are so few things that i have had to repurchase in this time frame because i worked at sephora i was getting things like gratis all the time so i was finally free from using up just free mascaras that were given to me which i'm i'm thankful that i have gotten gratis like i'm not trying to be ungrateful there is a freedom if you are someone who's ever worked in the industry the makeup industry where you've been given free stuff for a long period of time where you get to the other side of it and you're like I get to make the choice I get to choose what I buy and of course you could do that while you're getting gratis but like why would you if you're getting free makeup why would you start buying it especially with mascara now of course you're gonna buy eyeshadow palettes because they never give that stuff they never give you the good stuff in gratis but you always are getting mascara and eyebrow products like why would you ever buy them 
Anyway, so that's my point. That's my point is I finally got to the other side and I was like, I'm going to wear the shock mascara. That is the mascara that I'm going to use. It's going to be the only mascara that I buy. And then it was gone. And then I saw that YSL threw out this guy and I was like, it's never going to be as good. I was like, I've heard so many horror stories from people whenever their favorite products get discontinued or reformulated. That's not as good. The Lash Clash is so good. It, it's it just, it's kind of just like the shock. And I wouldn't be surprised. I truly wouldn't be surprised if it was just the shock. But now it's called Lash Clash. Like uh, that, like they, maybe they like, we're just putting it in a new component. It, also, the components are not, not great. The component on this is like, does, it feels pretty gency. But the, ooh, the formula inside there is so good. It makes your lashes look so good. From what I remember, because I tried to rebuy this. You know, I'm always having trouble buying my, mascara from YSL. What the hell? What's going on? Why can't I ever get what I want? Anyway, I do think that in the new year, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to go back to the Lash Clash. Well, the joke's on me. I bought the Tower 28 mascara to start using in January because I haven't used it in a while and I like miss it. But I recommended the Tarte one to them and they just came off of using this YSL one. So maybe the Tarte one's better. I think I have, okay. I just recently got rid of the Tarte one. It's I'm, I'm at the end of my three months. I'm going to buy the Lash Clash and then I'm going to decide which one I want because it could be either one of those. I could commit to either one of those. They're both so good. Okay. I'm done talking about mascara. It's like kind of a hard thing to get super excited about in my opinion. Uh, in 12th place. <laughs> This is something that I've had all year. It's one of the first things I think I bought this year. If not, it, very early on. I think I bought it in January. The Chanel Healthy Glow Le Beige Bronzer. And I have the shade Deep Tan. <laughs> I don't think I have to be the one to tell you that Chanel's shade range is trash. Kind of just like Chanel as a company is trash. Like, I don't think I have to be the one who is informing you of that. Would I be a better consumer if I didn't buy this? Yeah, if I didn't buy Chanel product, I would be. I'm fueling the fire. I'm doing that. And so I'm aware. You, you don't need to remind me. But what I am going to tell you is, I get why people like this. Now, I know that the formula has changed. And this was a new shade when I bought it. Deep tan. Deep tan. Deep tan. I was always afraid to buy the original one, the original color, because it, it only came in one color before this. Because it looked orange. It looked orange. But this one is like red. It has a red undertone. It, it, it is deep. However, the formula of this is so blendable that whenever you put it on the skin, I think that people with a deeper skin tone than me, not like the deepest of skin tone, but like people with a medium skin tone would be able to use this as well. But like I apply it more sheerly than they would, but I just like this undertone so much better. Anyway, let's get away from it. It blends super well. It has a nice sheen to it. I like it. And, and I like the way it wears throughout the day. I love it in the summertime. It's like a bagel bite. In the morning, in the evening, even at supper time, I'm ha more than happy to put this on. And I still have so much of it. You get a full ounce of it. And <laughs> sometimes I get mad. Sometimes I get mad when I watch people review makeup. They talk about the price. And this isn't to justify the price of expensive makeup. I have been using this product all year. Most of the time I was doing my makeup, this was the bronzer that I was using. And I've also been using other things all year. Like if you, for example, if you look at my Chantecaille Perfect Blur Powder, I'm about to hit pan on it. It's the powder that I've been using all year. This is the bronzer that I've been using with almost every look this year. And it looks like I barely got a brush in it. I use so little of it. So like a lot of people turn their nose up at like $50. But I was like, well, in this case, it's like, I don't know how or when I'll be able to get all the way through this product if I was diligently using it this year and I still feel like I haven't made a dent in it. Sometimes that happens. Anyway, so, just a different way to think about makeup. Not saying that you always should be spending the most money on makeup. And, and I'm not saying that it's better because it's more expensive. I'm just saying like, sometimes think about like the cost per use. Like the cost per use on this bitch is so low. Because <laughs> I just like, I just been, I've used it so many times this year. So I, I think about that sometimes. Anyway, I know like I shared that. But this formula is really gorgeous. And I like really get why people get into it. I kind of wish they did sell a smaller size. And I obviously do wish that they extended the shade range. Even the light shade, like the lightest shade, it's a weird undertone. Like I don't understand. Like I don't understand it. And you know what's very funny is I actually like we went to a Chanel counter to buy this. Well, did I want to buy it? No, I kind of beelined it for it. I was like, tell me more about this. I don't even know why. I don't know what got in me that I was like, I'm buying that today. But it was really the vibe that I was putting out. I like went to the Chanel counter and I was like, tell me about this bronzer. And the sales associate swatched both. And she said, 
for me to buy the deep tan one. She's like, the undertone on this one's better. It's better for you. And I was like, okay. But like, it's just crazy that that's deep tan. Anyway, beautiful product, flawed company. <laughs> Let us move along. In 11th place, we're almost to the top 10. Just missing out of the top 10 is the Rowan. 1111 quad. What a lovely first runner up from 10th place. I don't really want to dig into this too much. If you've been here, I've talked about the Rowan quads ad nauseum. There's a Rowan video. This one is the best one. The color, the shades in this quad are the best. The textures in this quad are the most, to me, they are the most exquisite textures out of all of the Rowan quads. The most interesting textures in all of the Rowan quads. Now, if you're not someone who loves texture, then you probably would like the 52 degrees or the 75 degrees better than this one. But there is some like chunky glitter texture in here. And oh, it's so yummy. The one in the top left corner, couldn't tell you what the name of it is. But that shade, why are we still making eyeshadows? It's the best shade of eyeshadow. It's so good. So good. It's so stinking good. The waxy texture, the way it looks on your lids. Uh, and that's why this one's the best one. It, this one is literally the best one because of the shades in it and the texture of that one in the top left because it's so stinking good. It's like the Alchemist from Ritual Defeat, but like more wearable on the eye, like lasts longer than the alchemist ever would on the eyelids. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so stinking pretty. Ah, I love it. Ah, uh, but yeah, not the, not in top 10 worthy though. So, so just know that it's not in the top 10. I love this eyeshadow palette. I'm so glad I got to try Rowan quads this year. We're in the top 10. Drop a comment. Who's going to win? Who do you think is going to win? In 10th place is the Givenchy matte lipstick in the limited edition shade. We I had just done a critical sass. So it was a couple of weeks before I would do another critical sass. If you're new here, critical sass is my new makeup release videos where we be, we're critical of the makeup that's coming out. I remember when Makeup Release Radar posted this. I am not one to get like super excited about lipstick. It really isn't me. I don't really feel like uh, lipstick formulas. Like I really wasn't the person who was like before this year, I just felt like lipstick was lipstick. And then like this year, I've really gotten into it. I saw this photo and I said, "Ooh, I need to have that. And I was like, but I'm going to wait on it. I waited to the critical sass. That was a couple weeks later. Talked about it on critical sass. Everyone in the comments, it might've been a critical sass live. I think I posted it up and I was like, guys, <laughs> this is the prettiest shade of lipstick I've ever seen. And it, is the website describes it as a brick red but in the imagery it looks orange and it looks it's the color that it looks like in the imagery i don't know why they're trying to say it's a brick red and i understand that like brick red isn't like a true red it's orange and it's just the most stunning lipstick shade that i own not only that Givenchy that formula is awesome it is the most comfortable airy matte that i have ever worn it has like very nice longevity but of course it's a bullet lipstick so it's not meant to stay on your lips through like eating and all of those things but the way it fades off like if you do eat something oh it just fades off so gorgeously like you still look good after you've eaten even though you have like a vibrant lipstick on it's an incredible formula and the packaging is cool like i have the, this packaging is pink this was their fall collection i'm not really sure why a if you were ever interested in a shade from Givenchy and their matte lipstick formula, I think that it would be worth the try. Like the, it's, it's great. It's really great. <laughs> and I, I really didn't foresee myself at the beginning of this year saying in the top 10, I have a lip product, but I'm here and I'm doing it and we're here. In ninth place is the Bare Minerals Bronzer and Kiss of Copper. I realized that the bronzers came out last year, but they re they re-released them this year and now they're a permanent in their collection. I love orange blush. I love orange blush. And I remembered, I remember in 2021 when everyone was like, the blondes are the blondes are the blondes. It was like, at everyone, it was the top of everyone's list last year. It was like, at the end of the year, it was like, the bare metals blondes are the blondes are the blondes are the blondes are. And of course, the normies are all picking kiss of rose, kiss of pink. I pick kiss of copper because I'm a rebel. <laughs> this one's awesome. These are awesome. It's so infuriating to know that bare minerals is there and capable. Like this, like you could be doing exciting things bare minerals and i you know i believe that they're probably doing exciting things formula wise in some of their other products you gotta make that science exciting to me as a, someone who's purchasing because like if they released the bronzer in like more shades 
I'd be keen on maybe trying a different shade. What could that look like? And I remember there being like rumors throughout the summer that they might release more shades, but like, are they? I don't know. Anyway, here's why I like it. There's the perfect sheen on it. It's like not highlightery, but like if you didn't want to wear highlight over top of it, you wouldn't need it because it has like a glow. It's what, you know how like contour, bronzer and blush and highlight are supposed to like bring your skin back to life after you've put foundation or complexion products on it. Like it's supposed to bring that life back. What the bronzer does it does that in one fell swoop now i don't think it really replaces a bronzer like i don't think it does that i don't understand that concept of it but there's so much life to this product when you put it on your cheek it just like brings it to life pro tip if you have this product and you have found that it's too pigmented if you have a very feathery fan brush try applying it that way because for me i did run into some issues at first because i was like putting on too much of it it felt a little bit too pigmented some of my subscribers in the comment section had said i really like this but i'm finding it too pigmented and then we all tried a fan brush it was like the solution so there's a solution for you if you need it you might not need it you and if you want to put on more bronzer go ahead because the blonde formula is great. And obviously I've heard other people who have used Kiss of Pink and Kiss of Rose. And they've also said that those are really gorgeous formulas. If Kiss of Copper isn't for you, I don't see why not. Everyone should be wearing orange blush, in my opinion, in my opinion. As someone who came into this year really much more interested in cream formulas, for a powder blush to be like, yeah, you love this. I was like, wow, I do. I do love this. This is really great. I really appreciate it. There are so many blushes in this top 10. Okay, let's talk about number eight. In eighth place is another orange blush from Phytosurgeon. It's the Phytosurgeon's Skin Spark in Smolder. The, the Phytosurgeon's Skin Sparks man if you have been watching all along you realize you may remember that some other phytosurgeons products didn't do as well but i was like hold on don't be mad at me because i there i do believe in them here's where they shine this formula is so moussey it's so elegant to touch and just like beautiful and it like melts into your skin it becomes like one with your skin you can apply it with your fingers you can apply it with a brush you can apply it with a sponge there's no wrong way to apply this blush it is i think you know maybe my favorite formula of blush now you might be wondering you might be saying to yourself there's probably other blushes that are going to rank higher than this and there are that was more to do color because the the shade smolder is an orange and i do love orange blush as we just learned from kiss of copper orange blushes is something that I, I think i really wear more in the summertime and then in the summertime i'm like there could not be enough orange blush i bought smolder in january it was one of the first things i bought this year and then i do recall like it got to summertime and i was like using it all of the time but when i bought it in january i was testing it and i was like this is really great but then i like kind of put it away because i was like wait, wait, wait. But, like i you know i'll throw in an orange blush in the winter i'm why why not i can do whatever i want i'm an adult but like yeah i do tend to like lean more very cool toned in the winter i say as i have like a flaming hot cheeto lip on and you know, lots of warmth and glowiness happening on my face. I'm a person of many levels and you can't pin me down. Marina said so. But this is like the most gorgeous, like orange, orange leaning terracotta blush. It's, it's killer. Fido Surgeons formula i already said that is like the best but they also kill it just like with the nuances of the shades they've made in this skin spark they did the toasted blushes this year like you really can't go wrong i really i can't recommend the skin sparks enough and there's just you know something exciting about like right like you know an indie brand trying to innovate and like doing these things that the major brands aren't here it is and it's so funny because i think now that we i have this option whenever i see a blush release happen and like the shades aren't really nuanced i'm like well why would i buy one from this brand when I could buy my favorite formula in a shade that's probably better. Fire Surgeons killed it. This is it. And this is like probably the cheapest thing. <laughs> it's this high up and it's probably the least expensive thing I've talked about this whole vid, like this whole series. This is probably the least expensive thing that I bought this year. Incredible. We're back to lipstick. In seventh place. It's the Merit Signature Lip in 1990. Okay. So as I said, coming into this year, not very excited about lips. In fact, I think I did a lipstick declutter in 2021. Where I was like, lipstick is not my favorite thing. I don't know why I have so many lipsticks. I saw the talk. I saw Hannah Louise post and talk about these. I saw the makeup community at large buzzing about these. And I was like, there's no way that this lipstick could be this exciting, could be this worth. Merit reached out to me and said, can you do a Merit dedicated video? Blah, blah, blah. Push comes to shove, they send me a signature lip. They send me merits. They send me, well, I chose 1990. They're like, you can choose this and another thing. So I chose 1990 because I saw Hannah talking about it all the time. This changed my mind about lipsticks. This made me go, <laughs> this formula made me go, maybe I could be excited about lipsticks. 
here's why. Here's what I think. There's something so... So I didn't really talk about the formula. I talked about the problems with the lighter shades when I talked about slip in one of my other videos. But this is 1990 and it's different. This, I, First of all, I don't have that issue if you've been watching along. I don't have the issue where this hits the side of the bullet like I did with slip. Here's why I like these. They are so incredibly comfortable on the lips. They feel incredibly nourishing on the lips. But there's something interesting about this formula. Because if I told you that, you might think that this is like a product that would slip and slide on your lips. And it's what I thought too. And But it doesn't. I mean, it's not a long lasting formula. But I'm also, I guess you should know this about me. I'm not looking for a 2016. I'm not looking for my lip product to last all day. I don't need it to. I would love comfort. And when it wears off, that it doesn't look crazy. Like I don't need to immediately apply it again because of like what has just happened, what has just transpired. It's like a wash of color. You can build it up. It was what I needed to want to wear like lipstick in a way that felt more than like I would more than just doing it to finish a look because that's always what lipstick kind of felt like to me. I like never felt here nor there, but these are so comfortable. I love the way they wear. And I just think that why they're so popular is that they're like comfortable. They have some impact. They look really good on the lips. There's like a shade for everyone because they're sheer. It's like they're less intimidating, even the more dramatic shades. But like 1990s where it's at, I wore this all of the time. I cannot tell you the amount of times where I would post a look on Instagram and someone would be like, what's on your lips? Or if I was in my Instagram stories, people would message me and they'd be like, what's on your lips? It was almost, almost always it was 1990. And, you know, putting a lip liner under these, I use ground control from Pat McGrath was the lip liner I used the most. Like it was like a dark, rich brown. Under oh, it's where it's at. That's the lip. Like if there was a signature, if there was a Tom, there was a Hope Mess Tom signature lip this year. It was Ground Control and Merit 1990. And it's, I stand by it. it. It is relevant to the shade too. Like 1990 is the shade in my opinion when it comes to this. And I, I know that's not the shade for everyone, but in my opinion, like if you're going to do it, 1990 is the way to go. It's gorgeous. It's stunning. I love it. In sixth place, there's no way I could have predicted this. In sixth place is the Sonia G Jumbo Bronzer Brush. As we said, earlier with the Chanel Le Beige bronzer. That was the bronzer that I wore most of the year. But I also have the Tom Ford bronzer. That was the powder bronzer that I held out. And I held on to that through most of the year. I think I started the year with more bronzers than this and I've like whittled it down. So it was like most, I was mostly using the Chanel bronzer. But the Tom Ford one was the only powder one that I held on to throughout the whole year. I just was like, I like the cream bronzer. I just like cream bronzer better. I like cream bronzer better. And you know why I got into the cream bronzer over powder bronzer was because I bought the Fusion series from Sonia G. And then Sonia G was like, I'm releasing a powder bronzer brush. I was like, well, it's going to be good. So now I do this thing where I'm now rotating between my two bronzers because of Sonia G. I love them both more than I ever had because of the quality of her brushes and the way that they apply these bronzers. I'm just telling you, this brush is not something that I would have thought that I would have wanted at the beginning of the year. But the way that it is like kind of flat on the side, you kind of like carve your cheek a little bit with it. It picks up the perfect amount of bronzer and disperses it beautifully on your cheek. Any other time, any other bronzer brush or any other brush that I might try to use for bronzer, I just feel like I could not find the happy medium. And using this brush, I just simply do not have to worry. Doesn't matter how much I swirl it in there. It's only going to pick up what it needs. It's only going to deposit what my face needs. I don't know how it does that. I don't know how it does that. Now, it looks like a really densely packed brush, but when you actually have it in your hands, it has a lot of give to it. It's not, it's not like not packed but it's not like super dense so I know that there are some other brushes shaped like this in Sonia G's collection but I've heard that those are more stiff I don't own any of those like I think there's like um oh, I don't remember the name of it but there are other brushes that kind of look like this and I've been told that this is like not at all the same thing I am so happy to have been able to fall back in love with powder bronzer I'm just so excited about the way that brushes from Sonia G have made me feel about some of my products that I was like yeah I like them and then like I had the brushes I had a tool that was like better for it and it was like oh no I love these products and that's not to take away from the product themselves because just sometimes like the application process it makes a difference it, it really does and it's not like the qualities of the bronzer have changed because I'm using this brush it's just the way that the bronzer is going on is different and then the result with the two powers of the things combined incredible I always have been so intimidated of brushes this big but not as big it's, it's I don't I still stand by it I don't think this is big as that one that khaki uses I still stand by it I don't think it is this is like what weirdly enough this is one of my favorite releases this year when I'm choosing my bronzer I go like oh I don't know which brush I would use because it's like do, do I want to use that in fifth place I'm so excited is the Westman Atelier baby cheeks 
in Mimi. The way that I got to this product, not the cleanest route. <laughs> I've talked about the blush journey. Let's look at it into it a little bit more. If you were here, you were here. And if you know, you know. And I'm going to let you guys know. But I'm going to also tell people who maybe uh, are finding my channel for the first time. For a better portion of this year, I got it in my brain that I wanted, it's not quite what Hannah describes as old gum, but it's definitely like old gum adjacent. <laughs> like, but not one that looks pink, a pink that has so much gray in it, that it's like a gray pink. And there were a couple releases this year where it looked like the blush was going to be that. And that's why the Gucci blush ended up so low because in the pan, it looks like what you think it's going to be. And then you put it on your cheek and it's just pink. I didn't want just pink. Page. <laughs> P-E-I-G. Like this pink gray and also like right it has to look like skin too it's so it was like on the hunt for this after a certain point this year and also my friend Brittany born blushing here on youtube we were like in search of it together and we had both been lusting over mimi we've been lusting over this shade because on west Matilde's website it looks exactly like it looks exactly what you think it is. But when you read the description, when you just read the description on West Mentally's website, it says it's a warm beige. But in their marketing for it, it looks gray. It looks like a gray beige, like a gray pinky beige. And it is not gray. <laughs> it is a warm beige, but it's almost more neutral. It's like it's like a hint warm. But when on my skin, it reads more neutral than anything. And you can wear it with a cool tone eye look. You can wear it with whatever. I have always been in my brain looking for, like anytime I would buy a blush, it'd be like, it needs to be a special color. But in my brain, special color equivalented to intense color. So like, I do love orange blushes. I really do. But it would I would always swing too far whenever it would come to like another shade of blush. So it'd be like, I'm buying a hot pink blush. I'm buying a purple lavender blush. But it never once occurred to me to buy a blush that was like nude and I could wear with anything and that would make me the most happy. And like Mimi proved that to me. Rosy Beige from Gucci didn't do that because like that's just pink. There's something about this where it like melts into the skin, kind of looks like the skin. It just It's just like a the nuanced thing happening to your your cheek. When I wear it, it's not even something that you, it's really something that you can hone in on as like being like, that is blush. Like it, it's one of those shades. And of course they make shades like this for all skin tones. It would just wouldn't look like this depend if you have deeper skin. You obviously wouldn't use Mimi on your skin tone to do the same thing that I'm using Mimi to do. My world was changed. It, whenever I got Mimi, it was like the I was like I was like I, there was a moment where I was like I'm just going to get rid of all my other blushes, I guess. Like I don't understand why I would keep those around because like this is the perfect blush shade for me. The formula is really nice of the baby cheeks and like that's not new. The baby cheek formula isn't new. And I think that any like rave review you've heard about the baby cheeks formula, I think I would agree with that. They work over powder. They work when whether you're dragging them on the cheek or whether you're tapping them on the cheek with your finger or whether you're taking a brush and swirling it under the stick and putting it like it works however you want it to work. A very agreeable formula and it has like a skin like finish to it. It's like the formula is everything you want it to be, but it's really, it's really the shade of Mimi that like that revolutionized the way I was like feeling about blush in general. So while it wasn't the shade that I was looking for, it wasn't the shade I was in search of. It was a shade that really rocked my world and like I'm so happy I have it I hate that it's their website it's like a website exclusive you have to buy it through the Westman Atelier website Brittany unfortunately lives in Canada and it's expensive to ship from West Atelier to Canada but like if Sephora carried it it would be more accessible to her we kind of split the bill she ended up trying a Surratt blush that she really loves and it's really working out for her and while it's not exactly what she wanted it's like what she landed on and Mimi was that for me so we were we were testing these for each other and then we both really loved it and then we neither one of us felt compelled to buy another one to fill the gap because we were very happy with it while I was on this hunt for this pinky gray blush many of you many of you were like try inner glow from Kier Weiss and I was like I don't know I don't know if that's gonna be it and then Kier Weiss had a sale and I was like well now's the time you were all right <laughs> I don't even know that this is exactly the shade that I wanted this is a 
crazy shade. Like, this is a crazy shade. And, like, when you swatch them next to each other, when you swatch, like, Mimi and this next to each other, like, they're pretty close, but there's a lot more shine to this. There's a lot more shine to this. And the shine is where it gets that, like, grazy overtone that people were like, this is what you're looking for. And, oh, is it so good? Oh, it's so good. Like Mimi, once I got this in my hand, I was like, oh, it was, like, all I wanted to use. I have now cooled it on both of them. Like, I'm still, like, rot I'm rotating through my blushes more. In fact, I have a new cheek product on my cheek today. This, first of all, the component, the, the rich component, the one that's the most expensive, the most expensive component you can buy the Kierweiss blushes in is awesome. It's so heavy. It's like exactly what you want from like a, an expensive product. And the fact that I get to refill that, like if I should run through Inner Glow or like Inner Glow should like go bad on me and I want to replace the pan, I can just replace the pan. That's great. I love that. This formula is awesome. It wears really well throughout the day, but this color is it. Like I probably wouldn't want to buy another shade from Kierweiss. This shade is it. It's so funny because my comment section was telling me about it. And then I was like watching a khaki video and she was talking about it. And it was just like, this is what it was meant to be. This is what blush is supposed to be. This is what I didn't know I wanted or needed. And now I'm here. And I'm so happy to be here. I'm thrilled. It's a great blush. It's a great blush. I really couldn't have imagined that the, by the end of this year, I would have like, ended on Yes, I bought a Kierweiss blush and it's great. I wouldn't have even thought that I would have bought anything from this brand this year if you would have told me at the beginning of the year. We're the top three. <sighs> There's some notable things we haven't talked about, isn't there? In third place, the Sonia G. <laughs> jumbo base brush. I had so many foundation brushes that I had just accumulated over time in gratis at Sephora. Oh, and I had a Pat McGrath one that I had purchased, but like I had so many just foundation brushes that I have accumulated from Sephora. And also I think I had one from beauty school and I think I still have my foundation brush from beauty school, but I like that for very specific things and I keep it around. I got the fusion set and this is what changed my life. It's the perfect brush. It has this slight angle to it. And when you're putting on foundation, you know how they make those concealer brushes that are like shaped like the tip of your finger? Like the Rare Beauty one is supposed to be like that. The Pat McGrath concealer brush is shaped like that. And I think some other brands are starting to make brushes that are shaped like that. And it's supposed to be like if you were to, you know, it's supposed to be like the size of your finger if you were tapping on the inner corner of your eye, like under eye. It's kind of like that, but like as if you were like applying foundation with your palm. And the way that the brush is, it's like, that's like really weird for me to say. Like, obviously you would never like apply foundation like that, but the density is so perfect. And the amount of bristles that are in there are so perfect that it works with like any foundation formula I've tried. For example, the Ritual to three, three, three Drop Foundation still applied very well with this foundation brush, even though it wasn't my preferred way. I haven't met a foundation that I would not apply with this brush. There's something about how closely densely packed it is how much give it still has and the shape of it that when you're applying it like a lot of the a lot of the things that people don't like about applying foundation with a brush would be like that it leaves like brush like brush streaky marks in it I just find that it you very rarely get that the only time you ever like honestly honestly the only time you really ever get those like streaky marks in your foundation but this is if it's been a while since you've cleaned your brush the one annoying thing about this is if it's your only foundation brush which it is mine now I've narrowed it down to this foundation brush in addition to that one from beauty school but I like that for like very light coverage thin skin tints which I don't even have any in my collection right now but I will one day go back to the Glossier skin tint I, I just know that that's something that I'll circle back to at some point I do find that after a couple applications you need to wash this brush and I know that's gross I know that some people use like sprays after that but I don't like using the instant cleansers because they have alcohol in them and I just don't want to ruin the bristles of my like natural fiber brushes with the alcohol and I'm not even sure that's actually a thing that happens but it's like a thing that I'm concerned about so I'd rather just do a thorough washing of my brushes when I feel like I need to wash them I bought a second one I have two of these I have two of these so I can cycle through them and I don't need to use the same one all the time so that I can get further between like washing all of my brushes. I love this brush. I love it so much I bought it twice and that's excessive. I don't think everyone needs like to have two foundation brushes but for what I want like I once I started using this foundation brush I was like I do not need to try another foundation brush. I love this so stinking much. It's a great brush. It's so good. We've made it to the top two. What's it gonna be? You know what's left? I'm sure you do. And I'm sure you've known it was between the two products that are left the whole time. From the moment you found out that I was doing these videos, I bet you knew that it was going to come down to these two. My second favorite product of the year was a product that was released this year. It is the Isamea Industrial Colors Pigment Palette. I mean, 
Okay, so I know that this wasn't for everyone. (laughs) I know that this release wasn't for everyone, and I know that not everyone got on with it. But to me, this is what makeup is. This is what makeup is about. So first and foremost, I think Isamea's brand launched this year, and this was part of the first collection. And what Isamea did, and it continues to do, that no other brand is doing, is committing to the bit. So we're doing this industrial bondage thing. And it's just like from the packaging to the colors to 10 different formulas appearing in this eyeshadow palette. Like everything about it is what I want makeup to be. If every brand was committing like 1000% like Isamea was to what she's doing. And while the Wild Wild West or whatever the next, whatever the new release is called, while that isn't for me, I respect the fuck out of it. I think it's so cool what Isamea is doing. So this really aligned with me. I like really love grungy tones. I love greens. And so when you open this palette up, it's just like full of greens and like different textures. There's this like beautiful chunky silver that is like so blinding. There's that like rusty color in there. Like everything about it, the vision from tippy top to the bitty bottom to the delivery of it was just like so good. Much like Kira Weiss Inner Glow, much like Mimi, once this eyeshadow palette got into my hands, I was like having trouble not using it anytime I was doing my eyeshadow. I did a couple of videos on this in the month of July because it was a new brand and I feel like a lot of people were like kind of waiting to pull the trigger on it because it was like, well, who was going to be the guinea pig? It was me. I was one of them. And like when I got into this palette, I was just like, oh man, oh man. I was, you know, I kind of went into it thinking like, I'm not really sure what this is going to be like. I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. And then like, I just really started getting in there and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And so like, I did like a couple follow-up videos on this and I still feel about this palette the way that I do the first time I used it, the way that I did a month into having it when I was like, this is it. And I still, when I say this to you, I still envision a world in which like I could pan all of these eyeshadows because I love them all so much. I just love pulling out this palette every single time I use it. When I open it up and when I start playing with it, it makes me, it reminds me of like when I first started doing makeup, when I was like, I could do anything I want with this. Because I think there is something to you whenever you get into makeup and you do it for some time and you get really comfortable doing makeup looks the way that you do makeup looks, you forget the excitement of possibility because you're you're either doing it out of timing, you like do the same eye look because of timing, or you just like find it. And I, everyone does it. Like I've, you know, I've been guilty of it too. I just, I open it and I'm like, what are we doing today? What are the, we have so many possibilities. What are we going to do today? And I just love that. I love that. Like it kind of encourages finger painting with your, like, you know, the formulas, like, you know, they work with your fingers. It's just great. It's just so great. I just loved this whole release that Isamea is doing. And I just appreciate what Isamea is doing. And again, while I'm very fully aware that not everything that the brand is going to do is going to be for me, I feel very lucky that the first release was like very much, it felt like a targeted, like this is for you, the vision of it all. And I just hope that Isamea, as she continues to create makeup, continues to innovate because much like us and our comfortability uh, of you know, finding ourselves in this cycle where we're like, we always kind of want to wear the same thing, kind of do the same eye shape, wear the same colors. I hope that Isamea, if she should ever do something that feels completely neutral and boring, and maybe that's the best selling thing that she ever does. I hope she doesn't stop innovating because I think there are many other brands that we have seen that used to be innovators that stopped innovating once they found their money maker, when they found the thing that made the money and they just, you know, released that again and again and again and again and again and again. Because this is what's, this to me, this is what was made. This is the makeup's about. This is, this is what it is. That means in first place is the Auric Glow Lust. And I have the shade Meteorite, Morganite. (laughs) And I have the shade Morganite. I did not know. I did, and based on everything you know about me from working my way through this list and how my skin looks in this video and how my skin looks in a lot of other videos that I do, you know, throughout this whole year where my skin probably looks really glossy. I never thought that I would be in to this type 
of product. I just was like, I don't know that I get it. Like, I didn't understand the Hollywood flawless filter of it all from Charlotte Tilbury, the Lisa Eldridge, the Chanel, like all of those glowy products. Like, I've seen so many people buy them and compare them and say X, Y, Z things about them. I didn't understand. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't. I didn't understand. I fell in love with Samantha Ravindahl this year. I'm really late to the game, but I like discovered Samantha's content and got into it. And I knew she had this brand and then I really fell in love with her. And I was like, you know what? The parasocial relationship of it all has built me to the point where I feel comfortable buying this type of product from Samantha and just seeing what it's about. And I just like appreciate the way that Samantha like talks about releasing these things and all the considerations she took as like a business owner in releasing these things. That is what like really got me to the point to trying this. There was also a sale. It was like Labor Day. It all kind of happened at once. Like I fell in love with Samantha and her content. And then there was a Labor Day sale. And so I bought Glowlist. Very rarely has there been a time where I put on makeup where I wasn't using Glow Lust in conjunction with the look. Most of the time I mix it with my foundation. Sometimes I use it as a primer. Sometimes I use it as a primer just for the cheeks, like lay it down only in the cheek area and then like do other primers on the rest of my face. It has a little bit of coverage to it, which is like actually pretty nice, especially if you're using it as like a foundational tool, like a, mixing it with your foundation, it like adds a little bit more coverage. There's like a nice blur to it. I have used so much of this. It's so hard for me and the amount of time I put makeup on and the amount of time I use makeup for me to really see a lot of usage in things. It takes me a long time to see progress in something. Typically the things that I see the most progress in over the course of the year is like my powder. Like I'm about to hit pan in the Chantecaille powder. Like I'm so close to hitting pan in it. And that was because I use it in every look over the year. I have used a quarter of this bottle of this glow less. I've had it since September. <laughs> I've had it since September. That is why it beats out the Isamea palette is because this is something I kind of use every time I do makeup. It is a, it's, it's a vital step to it. It's like, even if I don't use it, it has been pulled out of the drawer because I'm like, well, I might use it. I love to, again, use it as a primer. I love to tap it on as the highlight on top of my, my cheekbone. It's just, you can use it, like if you have a liquid blush, you can use it to dilute and make that blush glowier. It's just so good. It makes no sense to me now. Now that I have it, I'm like, I can't imagine a world. I can't imagine a reason why before I had it, why I was like, I don't think I would like that. <laughs> like, I really don't understand because I love glowy skin. I love highlight. I love shiny. I love looking that way. I love, I just love that. Like, I love that kind of thing. So the fact that I like ever had a a doubt in my mind that like glow lust would be something or anything like it. And I'm wondering, you know, if I would have bought the Hollywood flawless filter in lieu of this, if I would have felt as strongly about it, but like, I don't think I would, cause I have now tried the flawless filter, but you know, I can't, or I can't change the past. I can't change the one that I bought first. And this has my heart and I use it all the time. That really shows you like, that really shows you like that. It's like very relevant to what I do in makeup. And that's the list. We made it all the way through. Thank you. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me on this journey through all of the makeup that I tried this year. If you are new here and you aren't subscribed and you would like to be here for the whole thing and so we can do this all again next December, subscribe now. We're going to get into some fresh new business next year. It's going to be fun and I would love to have you around to do it. Make sure you like this video before you leave go ahead and do that and i am also on patreon if you'd like to support me there to anyone who's been here for any amount of time this year the whole year part of the year just this video thank you thank you thank you for making this year so incredible on youtube for me i really appreciate you i really really do if you are going to participate in new year's eve festivities please be safe make smart choices that's all i can ask of you i want you to be safe because i want you to be here for the next video <laughs> and that's all i want from you i mean it's not all i want from you i want you to live a healthy and full and happy life and i think that we can make both of those things happen i appreciate you all so much for watching i appreciate you all so much for this year remember to follow your host and you will find me bye, -bye. forever